Hey everyone, I'm Eddie. And I'm Alex. Today we are going to break down our 10 favorite spots in Kyoto. If you enjoy the video, remember to hit that like and subscribe button. Number 10, Yasaka Shrine. Yasaka Shrine, aka the Gion Shrine, is one of the most famous shrines in Kyoto. Built in 656 AD, it's very small with a lantern line dancing stage that acts as the centerpiece. It can be easily accessed by the Gion bus stop, which is located right out front. We recommend going at night. You can see all of the lanterns lit up and practically have the place to yourself. Number 9. Otsuka Otsuka is a Japanese steakhouse located in Arashiyama. It is one of the best places to get Kobe beef in all of Kyoto. We ended up getting really lucky. Our taxi driver got lost, mostly because of our lack of Japanese, and after calling them to explain our situation, the restaurant stayed open for us. The Kobe was buttery and seasoned just right. It was a perfect lunch and introduction to Kyoto. Number 8. Bamboo Forest The Bamboo Forest is a gorgeous park, also located in Arashiyama. Even though it was raining during our visit, the forested walk was still beautiful and well worth the trip. The wandering paths take you through the landscaped bamboo groves and over to the Nonomiya Shrine. Prepare to deal with crowds, the bamboo forest is incredibly popular with tourists and was still pretty packed even though it was raining. Nearby, you can also visit the Monkey Park, Togetsukyo Bridge, or the charming town of Arashiyama. Number 7. Kinkakuji Kinkakuji is a beautiful Zen temple that's covered in golden leaf. Formerly a retirement home of a shogun, it became a temple after his death in 1408. The temple is a bit far from the center of Kyoto, about a 45 minute bus ride, but you can visit other stops along the way, such as Nijo Castle. We went as soon as it opened in the early morning and it ended up being the perfect time. The sunlight was positioned at just the right angle to give Kinkakuji its famous glow. Number 6. Kiyo Mizudera Kiyo Mizudera, meaning the pure water temple, is a hillside temple that was founded in 780 AD. The temple's wooden stage offers beautiful views of the city of Kyoto. The view may be slightly altered during your visit, as the main hall is currently covered and undergoing major renovations until 2020. You can also visit the Jishu Shrine, which is dedicated to love, and the Otawa Waterfall, whose water is said to bring about good fortunes. The shrine only costs 400 yen to enter, or around $3.65. We arrived as soon as it opened at 6 a.m. and hardly saw another person. The place seems to pick up when Higashiyama's stores open around 9 a.m. Number 5. Kurama Kurama is a mountain town located north of Kyoto Center. We took the train, which took about an hour and only cost around $6.00. It provided scenic views as it wound through the beautiful towns and forested villages. This region is home to the Kuramadera Temple. If you're up for the hike, you can take the 35-minute climb to the top, or you can skip half of that and take the cable car. The views from the top are breathtaking and provide a unique panorama of the Kyoto mountainside. Back down through the village, you can walk to the Kurama Onsen, one of the only open-air baths in Kyoto. Kurama is definitely worth the day trip. Number 4. Hirobun Hirobun is a Japanese restaurant located in Kabune, a vacation town up the road from Kurama. It's perched on top of a small river and is flanked by two gorgeous waterfalls. This restaurant makes our list for one very specific reason, Nagashi Somen. Nagashi Somen is a unique way to eat noodles. Customers sit in front of a bamboo chute and white noodles flow out of quick, cold water. You need to act fast and pluck the noodles out of the water with your chopsticks. You can then dip them in miso soup or wasabi. Nagashi Somen costs around $12 per person. Unfortunately, this option is only offered in the summer, but we are lucky enough to still catch it in late September. It's an incredibly fun and unique experience. Number three, Fushimi Inari. Fushimi Inari is a famous Shinto shrine located in southern Kyoto. Originally built in the 8th century, it is the most important shrine in Japan that's dedicated to Inari, the god of rice. The shrine is easily recognized by its thousands of bright orange and red torii gates that line all the way up to the top of Mount Inari. 
The hike to the peak takes two to three hours, but most people end their hike at the midpoint, which offers a viewing platform of the surrounding city, along with restaurants and shops. To get back down, make sure you go back the way you came. We ended up following some signs in Japanese that looked like they pointed to the exit, but instead led to the surrounding forest trails. With no signs or exits in sight, we obviously got pretty lost and ended up turning around, doing way more hiking than was necessary. Fushimi Inari is free to enter and can be accessed at any time. Number 2. Kabune Kabune is probably the most adorable town we have ever seen. Located in northern Kyoto, just steps away from Kurama, Kabune is a tiny Japanese resort-like town. Almost the entirety of the town is made up of ryokans, or traditional Japanese-style inns. And most of these inns have adjoining restaurants across the road that sit on bamboo floors atop the river with views of their own personal waterfalls. The majority of these restaurants strictly serve kaiseki, formal multi-course Japanese meals. These can be very pricey, so prepare to spend a good deal of money. There's only one road, and it's only one lane wide. That's right, not two lanes, one lane. As in, only one lane for two ways of traffic. Cars and buses are forced to pull over into driveways and shoulders, if there is a shoulder, to let the other direction of traffic pass by. While visiting, be sure to check out the Kafune Shrine, and maybe grab some green tea ice cream. Number 1. Higashiyama if you're looking for that old-school Kyoto feel, the Higashiyama District is the place to go. The walk from the Yasaka Shrine all the way up to Kiyomizu-dera is just about as picturesque as it gets. We found that we much preferred to go to this area than to Gion. The streets are mostly pedestrian only, and the scenery sends you back in time. Here you can find traditional wooden ryokans and shops, and stroll the gorgeous walkways like the famous Ninenzaka and Saninzaka streets. We went twice, once at 6 a.m. and once at 4 in the afternoon. The difference was incredible. Most shops do not open until around 9 or 10 in the morning, which leaves the streets practically deserted. After the shops open, the area is completely mobbed. You'll have a hard time seeing just about anything. So if you want to have the place to yourself, whether to have a quiet, scenic stroll or to capture pictures without anyone in them, early morning is the time to go. On the other hand, if you prefer to experience the shops and snacks that Higashiyama has to offer, then later in the day might be right for you. Either way, this walk is an absolute must-do in Kyoto. Did we miss anything? Would you change the order? Let us know in the comments below, and remember to hit that like and subscribe button.